Hi guys, it's Ona. Today is, uh, what is it, Wednesday, September 2nd. Happy full moon day, okay? Full moon last night. I want to thank everybody first and foremost, and most importantly, I want to thank everybody for all the thoughts and prayers and energy healing and Reiki, and I don't know what y'all did, but uh, I had my lithotripsy yesterday, they had to break up the stone and they had to leave in a tube because um, the stone had moved down into the ureter and uh, when they point the machine at it, it just kind of bounces around. So they leave the tube in there to make sure all the matter drains out of there and I have to get that removed next week. Um, and I guess my kidney was really like blown up and bloated and uh, you know they're like all this stuff they're like yeah it was way harder than I thought and you know they said I cannot believe you weren't in horrible pain and the tech was like yeah I I don't know how that didn't hurt and I thought you know what it's the healing energy it's got to be the healing energy because first of all why are they telling me how much pain I should have been in and it just it just kind of blows my mind that I am the I'm the first one to say ouch this hurts and it was not horrible so I think you know all this healing energy is really helping and I'm gonna need some on the 10th because they have to pull this thing out right right now I'm fine my bladder feels like uh, the bladder fairies are just doing um, some gymnastics in there right now, but you know, it'll be fine. I'm, I'm chill. I'm just hanging out today. What I wanted to do was the video on colon cancer after Chadwick Brosnan's death, this whole uh, narrative on colon cancer is starting to pop up and people are starting to realize that it's hitting people that are younger and, um, they want to, they have some questions and some people don't know any colon cancer survivors and since I am one I thought if you had any questions put it down and I'll answer them from from my perspective I'm a nurse I've had stage 4 colon cancer so if there's something you felt like you wanted to ask go ahead and ask so I got a few questions and I'll cover that and um, if you're sensitive to any kind of terminology like anal, canal, rectum, colon, anything like that, you might want to just hit the like button and turn off the video, okay? Because that's what I'm going to be talking about and it might just be like real gross. But um, just answering some questions about colon cancer, okay? And if you have any more, ask me. If you have more questions about it, ask me. In the comment section, let me know. I'm not shy about answering any of this stuff. And you may not know anyone who's had it, and here you have an opportunity to ask me. So go ahead, okay? The first question was, uh, does this type of cancer grow slowly? And I don't know what type of cancer Chadwick Brosnan had. Uh, well, we know is colorectal cancer. Cancer. Ninety-five percent of colon cancer is adenocarcinoma, and it is slow growing. The other five percent of the cancers comprise of different. Um, there are different terminologies. It's stromal, carcinoid, mucinous. Uh, and there's also a lymphoma that presents in the colon. Those are very, very rare and are more aggressive. Okay, there's also um, a mutation, a genetic mutation that um, increases your chance of colon cancer. So they always genetically test the, the tumors when they remove them. And if you have that mutation, they test your family. Yeah, always got, they always genetically test tumors now. So if you have it or your parent had it, 
you should be tested for this mutation. It's called CRAS, K-R-A-S, and uh, you can do that with a blood test, okay? Somebody asked, why can you, can you only get a colonoscopy every five to seven years? Or in some cases, every three years? Those things are dictated by insurance. Your insurance, Giblets wants to join in, so I'll, you want to come here? Come here. Um, your insurance says you can only have a colonoscopy every three years or every five to seven years. The guidelines, the recommendations are based on guidelines that put you in a category of what are the chances are you, that you're going to be sick in this age group? Do you need a colonoscopy? After that, after if you have it, if you've had cancer, you're, you go through all that, even then a colonoscopy only every three years or every five to seven years as dictated by your insurance. That is not uncommon. Are those guidelines going to change? I hope so. Let me pause this because, woo, woo, come here. I'm going to get jib. Let me pause this and get, okay. He was just barking at something. It's one o'clock. I don't know why he is barking. Anyway, uh, so the colonoscopies are, the guidelines are what your insurance dictates and your chances of getting sick in that age group. Hopefully it'll change. Um, I think their starting age now is 49. They want to uh, change that age to 45 for people to start getting colonoscopy screenings. Um, I'm not sure that that's going to happen because that's a huge cost thing. But there are home tests you can do for blood in the stool that would start the start a narrative going for for a colonoscopy if you're under the age. Okay, I was under the age of I was 49 when I had my colon cancer, and I was not I had never had a baseline colonoscopy anywhere. Alrighty, Jeblets is a big baby, so he's going to stay here. The difference between colon, rectal, and anal cancer. All right, let's do this with the dog on my lap and see how this works. All right, you see on the bottom there, anal canal, rectum, uh, sigmoid colon, transverse ascending, and all that stuff. I'm hoping that it shows up okay on the camera. If your tumor originates in this area here, they call it a rectal cancer. If it's a tumor that originates down here, or the origin was from the anal tissue, which is different than the rectal tissue and the colon tissue, they call it anal cancer. Everything else is colon cancer, but it all falls under the name colorectal cancer for the whole thing, okay? Um, and different types of treatment based on where it is in the colon too. So if your cancer is closer to the beginning here, the on the right side, this is if right if it was right on my body like that, okay? On the right side here, they can resect, okay, and reattach the rest of your colon to your small intestine. And your, this is how, what my intestines look like, okay? Uh, mine's all missing over here, okay? And they reattach this to the small intestine. That spills into here, comes out there. So all that is missing on mine. Because my cancer was all up in here and some up here, I don't have a colostomy. It's cannoli. If the cancers are down here, Okay, and they have to do some tumor debulking or reconstruction or and remove the entire area, they won't reattach the small intestine to the rectum. You'll have a colostomy. 
so that typically people that have cancer on the left side or anything closer to the bottom are people that will end up with colostomies because of where the cancer is. You either have one or you don't. Sometimes colostomies are temporary because they will they'll just cut a piece and have you'll have an external bag while they're working on tumor or reconstruction surgery or anything that's happening beyond the ostomy site. And when that is ready, they can reattach it. And that would be a temporary colostomy. For some people, that is an option. For some people, it is not. I was lucky. My cancer was all on the right side and they just reattached it. And um, I don't have a bag. But I have a big old scar right where, <laughs> right where they, they did that. Someone asked, can you live without a colon? Yes, you can. You can live without a colon. This entire thing would be gone. You would have an external evacuation appliance from the small intestine right into, you know, uh, a bag. And then you would have to, because of malabsorption, a syndrome, because the colon absorbs nutrients and vitamins and stuff like that, you would have to be on supplements for the rest of your life because you wouldn't, you're not absorbing the right amount of nutrients because your colon is gone. Yes, you can live without a colon. Um, diet changes and problems with food. You, do you think that that increases the rate of colon cancer, uh, particularly with GMOs? Um, I think processed food, this is just my opinion, by the way. Uh, yeah, I do. I think the, the amount of processed food that we eat and the pesticides that go in the food that uh, we eat is a contributing factor. Okay, I'm going to say it. I don't know if it's true. I could pull cards on it. But um, yeah, I think that that's a contributing factor to why we're seeing an increase of this type of cancer in people that are younger. I also think that environment in the air, it's not just what we eat, but what we breathe sometimes. Um, I was working with, uh, I was I was welding when this all started and I was, I was probably inhaling, this was told to me, okay, toxic fumes, aluminum, metals, and I lived in a house that had radon gas issues in Tennessee when I believe my colon cancer started and five years later diagnosed stage four. So yes, I think environmental influences and um, genetically modified foods, maybe pesticide and processed foods has contributed to um, an increase in cases with younger people. Stress, we know, is directly related um, to digestive issues. So, and digestive issues are, can give you cancer, right? Okay, someone asked if polyps um, during a scope, uh, someone had a polyp during a uh, scope cauterized and removed, but it was not set for biopsy. And that was a concern. If a, during a colonoscopy or, you know, a, a scope, if they remove tissue, a polyp or something and send it off for biopsy, that's that's because they it looks funny, right? There are uh, there are visual changes in a polyp that looks normal and a polyp that doesn't. Um, this particular thing that happened, I think, if it's a tiny, tiny sample and it was destroyed when it was cauterized, then they wouldn't be able to send it to the lab for biopsy because the tissue was destroyed. Um, but as long as, you know, getting it checked early and getting colonoscopies and getting those little polyps, if you know you have a history of them, removed and checked and biopsied when you have to, those are the things that you need to do to be vigilant about colon health, right? 
So, what else? I think that's it. I think that's it for that. I just wanted to get that out there. And if you have more questions, let me know. And um, we'll see you soon. Thank you guys so much for everything. It, it was just such a treat to come home from hospital yesterday and have all kinds of people just saying, we're praying for you. We're sending you healing lights. Uh, we love you. I mean, that just made my day. It really did. And I love you too. And I... I would not have been able to have been in no pain if it weren't for you guys. It, I wouldn't. It, you really helped me through this. We just have one more. <laughs> I need you for one more thing, okay, next week. And uh, I will see you soon. Take care.